we're enjoying Panama so far, but it's hot and we are always craving the cool weather, so we're heading to the mountains today. We'll be right below the tallest mountain in Panama, Volcan Baru. Decided to find our way up there. That's our mission for the next couple of days. Danny is picking up some local food, so let's check out this Chiriqui cuisine before we head up. This is one of those tortillas we saw in the store. You know, obviously a nicer one. One that's like properly cooked, I guess. Mm, smells darn good. <laughs> um, and they, this is from a fonda? Uh, this is from a place that was called like Bien Me Sabe. Well, you know me. And that's apparently a local dish too, Bien Me Sabe. It's pretty cheesy. It's really good. Let's see what we got here. I love how they wrap this stuff in banana leaves. Yeah. So good for the environment. For a little, for a little. Whoa! Wow. That looks amazing. If only I could remember what it's. Oh, it's called mono. It's actually called monkey. It's not monkey. You can get it with different kind of meats. I said, uh, which one do you recommend? And she said, uh, pork. So I got the mono chiricano. It's uh, from this area. It looks a lot like a gallo pinto to me. Looks like gallo pinto with banana, a little bit of pork. What do you think of the mono? It's really good. It's like a gallo pinto, but it has kind of like a tomato-y flavor in there. That must be some of the coloring. Mm. Yeah, that's really cool to have another spin on the gallo pinto down here. Yeah, and I love that it's in this banana leaf. I think that's like really, really, really cool. <laughs> that tortilla was two bucks, and this was three seventy-five. Wow, that's a pretty cheap lunch. Yeah, the tortilla is kind of pricey for one tortilla, but it's kind of a specialty thing. I'm not really a morning person, but this is a morning place because you're in a cloud most of the day, but here early super clear and just beautiful beautiful I let the cat and the dog out around us is pretty much just farms this is the ranger station ranger was super nice he said you can use the bathrooms here fill your water if you want cell reception he said go through the fence over here and go by the tank I might check that out just for the fun of it but there's barbed wire on the bottom and above not something for the animals <laughs> this Quetzal Trail is closed. Yeah, we can hunker down here. Emily's working on some videos and I'm trying to work on Photo Investigator app of mine because in the new version that Apple's announced, they're basically putting all the features people pay me for free into iOS. Not the first time Apple has done this to me. <laughs> They call it Sherlocking because there used to be a really popular plugin for Mac OS that would was called Sherlock and you could search through your stuff, which is now just a part of the operating system. But it's been a little stressful. Gotta not be stressed too much out here. Got all these pretty places to explore. Good morning! Danny got us some info about climbing Baru, the tallest point in Panama. We can hike on this side of the mountain by ourselves, but we won't be able to leave until after 5 a.m. because of COVID-19. This way is free at least, but we'll be hiking up a four-wheel drive road. Normally we would be okay with missing the sunrise, but in this area it gets cloudy. This hike would also be 16 miles round trip, which is a little much for us in one day, but we figured out option number one. I had a great morning chatting it up with the park ranger. Here they call him Guarda Parques. It's more like a guard than a ranger because he was saying how he's seen on TV how our rangers get <laughs> guns and cars. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he had a little envy of those rangers. <laughs> he's got a machete here. Yeah, he said, you know what? Trail's closed, but if you guys want, you can walk up over here. This road apparently goes two to three kilometers up to a bunch of farms and stuff. So they're growing strawberries. The nicest guy. Just chatting it up with him for like yeah a long time. But you made him a coffee. Mm -hmm. when we're having our coffee. He comes out with uh, those Hawaiian sweet rolls. <laughs> Same brand you get in the U.S. That's so funny. <laughs> My dad loves this. Yeah. He said, you know, well first he asked me, do you eat bread? <laughs> I was like, uh. <laughs> He's like, would you like some bread? I was like, uh. <laughs> He's like, let me get it. <laughs> and he came out with the bread. Even said, hey, take one for your wife. Because Emily was working on the video. 
super nice and now we'll get to check out what's up here he said there are still kids alleys they tend to be in the morning we still probably have half an hour until the time they tend to run away it gets too warm we better go for a walk now before it starts to rain by the way some info i picked up from the ranger was you can get a vaccine here even if you're a foreigner uh, just got to go to the right place and they're doing it in the town over here right now it's 30 and up so I can get it, Emily can't. <laughs> but yeah, it sounds like we might be able to get the vaccine here. I could get the first dose now, and then wherever we are uh, in a couple weeks, get the second one. So we might try that out. Sounds like they have plenty here. We wouldn't be like stealing it from a local or anything. Yeah, something to think about for us. Hey, you working on a video? Yeah. I got some good news. Tell me. We just hit 2,000 subscribers. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so me too, babe. You're doing great with the videos. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Come 2,000 people like you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you so much for subscribing. I'm so excited to put out more videos for you guys. This is a great news for me. So apparently I can get the vaccine right here and there's no line so I'm not like taking it from the locals or anything like that. Um, this is the AstraZeneca vaccine which apparently isn't as in high demand. I was really hoping we could get the vaccine here. This is only 30 and up right now so I can get it and we can't. They only do it from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. We're here at noon. I'm so glad Danny's able to get it. Oh my gosh. There's nobody here. No one. And the girl said I'm not allowed to get it yet. She did say that, so. Yeah, that's weird because there's nobody here. I know, it's okay, it's okay. She said not long I'll be able to get it. So. I said, wow, not many people are getting it. And they said, well, a few people have gone today, but but it's certainly not as in high demand as I imagined. Yeah. Which, uh, maybe, maybe they're just about to do the 20 plus. Yeah, Maybe yeah. everybody's already vaccinated. This is a good time for me to get it. I mean, what, yeah, how could it be better? <laughs> oh, this is too easy. I thought we would have to get on a list and everything. Hola. Aquí para vacunarse? Oh, solo uno. Solo uno. We gave him my passport to confirm my age and identity. And now we just wait a little bit and uh, get stabbed in the arm. Yeah. I was just a little in shock. I can't believe I actually got vaccinated today. I know. Dose. Yeah, that's so great. Yeah, you know, I think it's something everyone should do just so we can get back to not wearing these things. And <laughs> yeah. But in Panama, there's actually a fine if you don't wear this in a city. 25 bucks. It's nice that they're vaccinating travelers. Yeah, it feels like a really loving country. That's true. And uh, I read that about Panama City, that there's so much immigration in different areas that it's kind of, anything goes, a refreshing attitude there. Okay. Oh, I got my card and everything. I got my first dose, AstraZeneca. Didn't have to fly home and figure out what to do with our pets or anything. Didn't have to fly home, didn't have to pay. And we heard that Panama would do it for foreigners. But uh, I still was wondering, you know, if I would be taking one of the doses that somebody wanted, but this place is empty. Yeah, it seems like sad. they might start my age group soon because, yeah, there's no line here. They've been doing this three weeks now for 30 and un above. They did 60 and above before that for a while. And he said when it comes to be Emily's time, it'll probably be the Pfizer, not the AstraZeneca. Oh, okay. <laughs> to the guard post here where you start the hike to climb Baru. I'm not feeling super well after that vaccine, honestly. That was a bit of a rough night. I'm sure I'll be feeling better soon. But, uh, so we're not gonna climb the volcano today, but uh, we're getting so close that it's starting to go up. The road before this point was really nice pavement, or at least uh, nothing too rough, but it's really deteriorating. Oh, this is a nice stretch though. And we only have 650 meters is 
much better from this side. Volcan is the name of the town, fittingly. And there's the highest point in the country right there, Volcan Baru. We got to check out a canyon this morning, which was pretty cool. We went to Canyon Macha del Monte. It was really nice. It, it wasn't a crazy hike or anything, probably just a mile, maybe less, that we wandered around. But it was nice waking up and being able to see something cool and starting our day off on the right foot. Yeah, it's pretty cold up here. We're getting a nice breeze. Yeah. I it's, say it's 73, but it feels I'm in the 60s to my hand out the window. Yeah, Sombrita's loving it. Graham's gonna love cuddling. I love these mountains. That mountain on the left is Alto Chiquero, and that's all we could see from the other side where we were. Here we're also able to see Baru on the right, which is I believe a nine mile round trip hike with 5,000 feet elevation change. Hoping we'll be able to do it on a nice day like this. Wow, so the ranger said we are totally good to stay here. And he's writing down the email for me to get permission to climb the mountain later. He did mention you need a guide, so not stoked. <laughs> Wow, with how windy and cold it is down here, I can only imagine it. The summit it must be insane. We figured out option number two. We can head up from this side, but we'll need a permit and a guide. Again, we won't be able to leave until after 5 a.m. The guide costs $90 each. This hike would be more scenic as it's a trail and not just a road. And it's also shorter than the than the road that we would have walked on. The guard said that there are spots that would be hard for some breeds to get up with scrambling or rock climbing. Both sides are about 6,000 feet elevation gain. This side is a little bit less, so that's also a big plus. Well, I'm just using this opportunity of cool weather to clean up the trunk a bit. And I wanted to show you guys our electrical system. These are 155 amp hour, so there's two of them. Makes for 310 amp hours, they're in parallel. This is a 1000 watt Xantrex pure sine wave inverter. But yeah, we built these boxes so we can load up the trunk and not worry about anything hitting all that electrical. It's wild how when you have a closed container, it can really change shape going up to high elevation. Because of that, I think our water container fits seven gallons instead of the five it used to, which is a perk. I noticed while looking through the trunk that this propane bottle seems a little bit expanded. I don't like that at all. They have this over, you know, valve that should release pressure if that, that gets too much, but uh, we decided let's cook with it. Get some of that gas out of there. So I'm Emily's setting up shop with some baked potatoes. I'll use that gas. Oh wow, excited to eat these. Good job, baby. It's gonna be tasty. And meanwhile, I finally am fixing the van's headlight. We got these LED headlights that are epic, but we've had one headlight out for months. <laughs> we don't usually drive at night, so getting some good work in today. Wow, I love high elevation spots like this. You get the views up above the clouds, nice temps. Thanks for perfect vanning, especially when you have AC. <laughs> wow, the clouds rolled in, we're in the fog. I'm seeing a couple raindrops, so we better find the little buddy. Let Graham be free here, because we haven't seen a single threatening creature. You having a good time? Man, this is the first pet I've ever had. This guy, when I moved in, I was working from home on my apps and he would just bum rush me like full speed right at my face, last second turn and go around the back of my head. He did it over and over. I think he was testing me, but now I guess we're cool. Probably wouldn't be roaming as free without me. Try not to worry too much. It was a big thing to first let him be outside free. We had some rougher times where I got scraped up trying to grab him out of a bush or something, but now he's pretty mature. Best little buddy. Super friendly. I kept chatting it up with them, and 
on the way out, he said he appreciated my company, gave me a huge smile, it felt really great. But we need to get a shower, we need to get some more water for the van, so we're gonna head over here, a little bit higher elevation, and it's called uh, Alto Respingo area. And there's a couple really nice hikes in this area, so uh, current snow can come meet up with us here, real comfortable spot, you know, we'll have showers, water, internet, <laughs> all those things for a day or so, and hopefully uh, be able to do some of the things in the area. So, we're meeting back up again with Sue and Kurt. They just crossed the border. Double vanning! It's been pretty sweet having Snow and Kurt meet up with us again up here in Panama. This place is a beautiful garden. The town here is called Cerro Punta. There's this hike up this thing. You know it's a rainy day so our other plan kind of fell through but there's a break in the rain. I think we're gonna head up that, check it out. But this spot, Hotel Los Quetzales, has been great. It has these beautiful grounds. It has a really nice lounge upstairs. We were all hanging out last night. Which is great in this cold climate to have a spot with a fireplace in there. Looks like a ski lodge. It's been amazing. So the last option we found to get up a route is driving up. Snow and Kurt are also excited to go this way with us. We could get a guide to take us up to the top in his four wheel drive car. This option we will be able to go for sunrise since his company has pool with the guards here. It's $90 each which is the same price as walking up with a guide on the trail anyway so might be the one. So today we're gonna go do the acclaimed most beautiful hike in Panama and Kurt's gonna come with us. It's called Sendero de los Quetzales, so we're gonna be looking for some Quetzals here. The campground owner said there are Quetzals and even baby Quetzals. Danny and I have never seen a Quetzal, so we're super excited. Look, that's salary right there. This? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Spent the night, two nights on the other end of this trail and it's hyper closed. They don't let you in. But when there was a gap in the guards, some people did do it. And the guard who came after that, he didn't mind. And I became friends with him. But when I talked to this guard here, he said the trail is closed. Right here where we are. So, oh, well, I was talking to Jorge. And over there, we spent the night at the other guard post, the Faustino. And they told me I could go a kilometer at least, a little ways. And he said, well, the trail is really dirty. If you're very careful, yes, you can go. I don't know if it was the name dropping or the confidence, but he gave us the go ahead to hit up this trail. And there's the, the guard booth here on this side. This guard check looks just like the one that we slept at for a couple days. Yeah. Wow, I think that would be Baru in the clouds here. And clearly they don't want you to go that way. They say there's a loose tiger on the trail. <laughs> very similar. They got a cool picnic area here. Officially it's closed because a hurricane damaged it. Pandemic, I'm sure, contributed to it not being well kept at the moment. Ah, it's really nice to be up here. Great weather for a hike. Oh, this is a sweet mirror door here. I recognize that cliff way out there. That was up above the valley we were last night. We were up over a hill over there. Peaks and valleys and farms. You love it? Such a perfect place. With your Alaska shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping me warm. Halfway there. Instead of osos, we got osos perezosos, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right there. See, look, we got to go up more. Altitude profile. Oh, there's the altitude. Oh, great. Wow, so we're on the Sendero Los Quetzales. As promised, the trail is not super well cleared, but it's not bad either. It's not as dirty as I thought it would be. I thought we were just walking through Matanillo again. Yeah, I mean up here we'll see if there's a, some kind of a tree in the way and things like that, but hey, as long as they let us go, I'm, I'm cool with it. And here it even says you need to have a guide, but uh, Pretty lucky that I did the name dropping of all those guards. <laughs> you know, but Kim, you know Danny, he, dangerous Danny, he's not gonna use a guide. <laughs> yeah, I can see why they'd be a little worried of letting people in here without having it upkept. Yeah, this trail is definitely getting overgrown. 
We should have brought the machete. You got your machete, Kurt? I do not. We need a machete on this one. I'm gonna buy one today. <laughs> Looks like the trail's heading up this corner here. Pretty overgrown. This is looking beautiful. Oh, we still got steps. Whoa. <laughs> Are you gonna tap it with your foot? All right, Kurt thinks that he spotted a cat, so I'm so excited. This would be my first one. So I knew he would be a good luck charm. Well, I knew he would find one. <laughs> Danny and Kurt checking out this bit is a little overgrown. Oh, okay. So we're not sure if we want to keep walking. We have already walked like two miles, almost two and a half miles. The beautiful trail here. The birds are really beautiful and the sounds of the birds are really calming. Typical hike with Danny. He's like, here's one more thing we have to check out. Yeah, we're gonna call this the end of the trail here because it looks like it becomes pretty steep downhill. And what with the nature of the trail not being completely kept up, you know. But it was beautiful up here, great temperature for a hike. Possibility we see a cat on the way back. Yeah, this trail is a little overgrown, but it's not bad. I'm going to give it 10 points for the isolation. You can't even drive to the trailhead. As well as, it's not even open, so I'm giving it 100 more points for that. Feels good. Yeah, this is one of the best parts. These avocatillos, little avocados, are what the Quetzals like? Yeah, that's their food. And they'll eat this, they'll swallow this thing whole. They digest this off, but their digestive system germinates this seed. And so it's like a symbiotic relationship between the avocate tree and the Quetzale. Nature. safe and sound. Time to get some lunch. Okay, we're gonna end it here because we have a big adventure going on Baltan Baru with Snow and Kurt. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys then.